Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're jumping back into some more FTB Skies, and I hope you guys are ready. So today, there's lots to do. I want to get lava automated set up today, and also use that lava to hopefully generate some power. And by the end of today's episode, I really want to get our mob farm sort of situated and set up. Uh, so to get started today, Integrated Dynamics is going to be our friend, right? So we've just moved away from the Integrated Dynamics storage. And uh, what I need to do is grind out a few more of the mineral saplings. It looks like I still have several logs. I can go ahead and pull the old fashioned squeezer and pull out the basin because I'm going to have to use this again. And then I'm going to need a pressure plate. Uh, so with all of this stuff, we should be able to upgrade our squeezer today and get ourselves a mechanical squeezer. Uh, the mechanical squeezer is what we are going to use to automate the squeezing of our blaze powder. And that is gonna be a good way to get lava, right? Lava is very important and having an automated source of lava is going to be tremendously helpful throughout our playthrough. Uh, not only just for normal use, but for power. We can use it for power early on and it's a fantastic way of doing that. Uh, we should have a consistent amount uh, always showing up here with the blaze powder. Now that I have the mechanical squeezer, I've hooked it up to our combustion generator. I have it now working. I put some mineral logs in here. And uh, if you click this to enable, it'll auto output into the basin. Now the goal is to eventually have this basin turned into the mechanical version, a mechanical drying basin. Uh, but for right now, this works. This works just fine. Um, and should supply us with enough mineral to actually get another one. Um, now, I need to use this mechanical squeezer elsewhere. And I think once we start getting lava, then we'll be able to supply the lava back into our own setup and it should power itself. I don't think we should run into any problems there. I think, I think if anything, this should be self-supplying so long as uh, our system here doesn't get backed up. Now, believe it or not, the automation for this is gonna be quite simple. We just need some power right here on our generator to supply power to our squeezer. Now from the bottom, I'm actually gonna hook this into refined storage and I'm gonna have an exporter that's going to export into the bottom here. Now what I'm hoping is that this will automatically push to our tank that is going to be onto the top. Now the one that's on top is going to be an inner tank and uh, I'm gonna need some orange dye. Uh, orange dye, because I want this to be labeled as orange going into here. Um, and this this should work or you know what we could try out the new tanks from the storage mod and then i guess we could hook into that uh later on i think i think it might be best to just put a drawer here and then just plug in and hook the uh yeah hook the lava into our refined storage system so we can use refined storage to transfer our lava you gotta love when I change my mind like mid project uh but you know i was thinking yeah inner tanks are really really useful but I want to try something different. I do want to try something different. So functional storage has new tanks. Yeah, fluid drawers. So it's just a single bucket makes a fluid drawer. That's kind of cool. What do we get for our fluid drawer? I'm assuming this is under storage. So we get a fluid cable ooh, from cyclic and we get a redstone utility. Now to use that cyclic fluid cable, um, I believe we need the cyclic wrench to be able to do that. Um, this thing right here. So we do need a wrench, so I might as well make that if we are going to manage this. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about it just yet, but I would like to actually pull from this to send to a generator that we're gonna actually have on the top. So I don't have to use coal all the time, right? That's the goal. So let's go ahead and place this next to it and then make sure this is set to true. Now what we should be able to do is simply take some of our blaze I don't think we grabbed any. There we go. And we just put the blaze in here, right? But we're gonna hook up, hook it up to refined storage. But it doesn't take very long to get the lava piped in. And there we go. We just have lava generating. Nothing more satisfying than being a tiny little person and <laughs> placing down the cables in a single block space. Ah, it's fantastic. So up under here, I have my exporter, right? The exporter is gonna go here. And then we're gonna have this. This is the external storage, same thing we use for items. You can actually hook it in and make sure to set this to fluid type and uh, you can now apply the fluid type and set this to a higher priority. So if you do, or if you're dealing with fluids, make sure that that will go 
curse and sin and pull from there. Um, so there we go. So fluid should be hooked in and we can change our grid by clicking here. We can now see the amount of fluid we have based on that grid there. I'm wondering, can I make the grid a little bit larger on each one of these? There we go. That's too large. There we go. Uh, it looks like no, it's just gonna be whatever I, I okay, never mind. <laughs> Um, so now let's go ahead and do blaze. And the cool thing is, is you can actually just drag this in. And uh, the exporter should start sending blaze in. Unless the mechanical squeezer has some odd thing where it requires things to be placed into the top. Um, that might actually be the case. Um, this is set to items. It is set to export. But I'm going to guess that that is probably the problem. Let's test it out. Just to make sure. There's all about trial and error. So we can get this up here. And then plug this into the top. And then say blaze. And yes, it definitely is directional. And so I have to input from the top. Thankfully, we can facade these cables, though. And just to make sure I don't forget, I'll have to... Plug this in, boop, there we go. <laughs> so that's all nice and plugged in now. We can even get rid of this one down here because we don't need it. Now to a facade with refined storage, we can make these covers. And then we have the other covers that we can make right here that are the hollow covers. These are useful for the connection that's like, for example, right here, um, because you do have to like cover the block face. So for example, right here, this whole block face will get covered, but we're gonna be missing the one side that's over here. Also, I could probably full size myself. <laughs> uh, we need the, a cover to be here. Um, it's a little harder to place these in, right? Because they don't always want to go. Um, but I can take this off temporarily and then place it in. That makes it a little bit easier to do. I don't know if you can, I don't know how you can click those on um, and get it, get it to work properly. Uh, but I don't know. There we go. And now it's connected. You can see that line runs over there. And then we just got to get the blaze put right back in. But we do have lava power, and with this being on the top, it does make it a little bit harder for me to pipe this in. Uh, this is also gonna retain some storage, but what I can do is I can just send the fluid over here to another generator using the same method, using an exporter, except we're gonna fluid export. So I think I've sort of changed my mind with what I'm actually going to uh, gonna be doing here. Um, so, I think I'm gonna be going with some cyclic for power transfer. It may sound crazy, but cyclic actually has a way of transferring power wirelessly. It is quite good. Now, let's go ahead and make Obsidian a little bit easier for us. Uh, by doing so, we're gonna need some pressure plates. This is a little bit expensive because we don't have a good way of getting uh, Obsidian, but uh, this will help us out at least with uh, the basics of getting you know, some obsidian generated. But we're gonna need a solidification chamber and a melting chamber. So let's see, it looks like we have just enough obsidian to make both of these machines. And we need this because Cyclic uh, sort of has its own like uh, gating mechanic, right? Uh, you have to go through the progression of putting items in here uh, to get into some of the other tools that this offers. For example, nodes, uh, which we're gonna be getting into. Transfer nodes are really, really cool. You can send items, fluids, and power wirelessly. Uh, it's pretty neat, right? But we need this uh, crystallized amber. So we need magma, which we get from a melting chamber. And then we need to solidify it inside this with a little power. See, both of these require power. We're going to be hooking up to our regular generator that we're using. Uh, but the goal is to have a dynamo and us send the lava to the dynamo using refined storage and then send the power from the dynamo to our machines wirelessly. So that way we can have a nice clean looking build. Now to get obsidian, we just have to get lava into the melt or lava into the solidification chamber like this. And then we put cobble evenly distributed here and that will make obsidian. And it's probably best to, to speed this up and get that going a little bit faster. And as you can see, we'll make obsidian this way, but that's not really what I wanna do. I just wanna use up what's in here. Um, so that one bucket generated a little bit less. So let's go ahead and empty it out. I'm just going to pick it up and that should clear the inventory here. 
Now, in this, we need to set up, uh, to get that amber, we are gonna need magma blocks. Uh, which means we need some magma cream. Let's go ahead and make a couple of magma blocks. Uh, just for this process. Then we're also gonna need gold and redstone blocks. Thankfully we have all of these resources in abundance. So there's our redstone blocks. And last but not least, if we take a look at Amber, I should probably get this bookmarked. Uh, so hover over it and hit A. We're also gonna need fire charges. Uh, fire charges, pretty simple to make. There we go. So we put all these things together, uh, and then this should send the lava to the adjacent inventory. It should. So we put this in here. You can see it goes over here. I thought it automatically went over to here. Maybe I'm I'm wrong. Uh, we can use a fluid cable for this though. So let's for right now just put a fluid cable on the front and I'll show you how to use that. We use a wrench right here to pull and that will send to the solidification chamber. Very cool. Um, now on the bottom we'll go this, this, and you put it in the order that it shows and that is going to generate the amber for us. And once I have this amber, like I said, uh, I can use it also to upgrade to the catalyzed obsidian. This is some really powerful stuff used for making some nice tools and armor, including a powered diamond anvil, which converts power and repairs durability on tools. Uh, we can make some charms, which are handy. And this armor is actually pretty nice. There's a torch launcher, an uncrafting grinder, which I'm kind of interested to see how that functions in this pack. Uh, there's an uncrafting grinder in here. Uh, usually these are disabled, but it'll be interesting to see how an uncrafter fares. <laughs> I don't know. Usually there ends up being like ways of duplicating stuff uh, sometimes. So almost everything's ready to go. Right here is the uh, the transfer node that we're going to need. This is the energy one. And believe it or not, we also need this thing called a GPS, which is going to require charcoal, uh, specifically charcoal, not coal, charcoal. We're making a GPS here, and uh, this is how we're going to tell the node what block to power. And so, yeah, it's going to need it's going to need paper and it's going to need this carbon paper, which uh, does require us to use charcoal uh, for for each of these. Uh, thankfully, you get four per charcoal, though, which is kind of nice. So we have four GPSs. Let's go ahead and make some blue dye. And we have ourselves a GPS, four GPSs to be exact. So down here, I have my magmatic dynamo. Let's go ahead and get that hooked up. So we're gonna need to say, hey, send this lava. Uh, to do that, we'll use an exporter just like we've been using. And let's go ahead and shrink down so it makes it a little easier, easier to see. And on the bottom of this, we're gonna set this to fluids and then we're gonna find lava. And we should be able to either drag the bucket or the, I guess you have to drag the raw fluid over to this. And you can see that's going to start filling it up nice and slow, generating some power. And it's going to be pulling out of uh, our storage for that. So there we go. We now have lava generating just like uh, we wanted, right? We want to be able to use some of that lava. Now, I know we have tons of coal and we can totally set up a bunch of coal generators as well, which we'll probably do in the future. Uh, to expand on more of our power. But for right now, it's really nice to have something being converted and generating power with lava, which it doesn't use a whole lot of lava to generate a significant amount of power. Now let's get our nodes placed in. So let's get this self supplying. So we'll place our node on the top here. And as you can see, that side is gonna be connected and start to fill with some power. And it has slots for these GPSs. Uh, now we need to define our GPS. So right now, this does have power. If I disconnect this from the power, what we want to see is this to start losing energy. Um, that may be hard to see. There it goes. It's starting to lose energy. So if we shift click on here, that is going to set this block on this data card. And then we can now put that data card in here. And you can see now it has energy and has sent energy to it wirelessly. And we can do this for multiple machines across our base. Uh, we can even power our controller with this now that it is right here. We can definitely add a GPS card to our controller. Um, and I'm not gonna do it just yet, but uh, in the future, we're probably gonna be using this a lot. Now let's talk about our mob farm. And for right now, it's gonna be down here in this nice little area, but 
how do we manage this farm? How do we how do we manage this? Well, I think we can set up a small water wheel contraption with a bearing that spins and kills these mobs with saws, but we also need to harvest the grass. Uh, and to do that, we can use a plow, I think. I think plows would be a great way of just clearing out the dandelions and the grass here. Um, and so they should be able to keep spawning while this is spinning and the, the saw should kill them. So to set that up, I've got to get into a little bit of create. I think this is a great solution for this. So right here, I have my water wheel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a vertical gearbox. I do need to make uh, a, an extra shaft. And uh, I can have a shaft here, one next to it, and one right here. And we can have a belt hooked in. Just like that. Very, very simple. On top, I'm going to have a press. That's how we're going to get our plates that we're going to be using. Then on the back, a vertical gearbox and a shaft in the middle. That'll supply this. Now, I'm going to need some barrels uh, just for some simple inventory uh, to be set up. So two blocks here, put a barrel and a barrel. And then we'll just use an andesite funnel, one on this side and one on the other. So funnels just connect right there. I don't know why I placed the funnel here. Of course, I don't have an axe on me. When does Chosen ever have an axe on him? Um, and so with it going this way, we just put the iron in here and it should get pressed up. So let's take what iron I currently have. Let's do 16 for right now. 16 iron should be fine. And let's get it slowly pressed in here. How pressing of a situation. <laughs> Bonked. Uh, we could also do this with thermal. There's many other mods that allow us to make sheets. But I really like the way this looks. This is just a temporary setup to get me some sheets so I can build that contraption. Now I think I have everything I'm going to need, but there is a problem. I've got to get in here, which means goodbye, mobs. I'm so sorry about what is taking place right now. I've got to get these guys cleared out. I have a perfect, a perfect idea for how this is going to work. This is going to be fantastic. Um, so, sorry, drink me. I'm so sorry. I've got to collect this delightful dirt. Um, and I should be able to pick it up with a silk touch shovel. And I actually get the dirt back. So, let me grab it all. And there we go. We have everything in our inventory. Now, what I'm going to need is a water wheel. That needs to be under that dirt, so this will be a good spot for the water wheel. So we'll get this placed in, and then we need it. To, we need to know what direction it's going to be spinning. So if it's going to be spinning I, this way, um, based on all of the directions that I have right here, we should be able to get this done. Water. Uh, I don't think I can just craft a bucket of water. Uh, okay, so it is going to be spinning this way. Put a piece of cobble here. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some water. So with our water in place, we know now what direction this is going to be facing, this setup. And on here, we have a mechanical bearing. Now, I want the mechanical bearing because I think right now, by default, it is actually spinning. Uh, I think, do we have to click it? We click it. Okay, so I, I like the idea of this. Okay, so let's leave it right here where it's at. And that'll be perfectly level with the dirt we're going to put around. Now, before we get the dirt put up, let's place down our log on here and let's get this set up. So this is going to be the arm that is spinning and it is going to be the length of the room. And so if this is spinning this way, then on this side, I want my saws like this. And on this side, I want my plows. Right. So there we go. Um, and then right here, I, I don't have a good way of turning this off because I don't have the, uh, the wrench. But once I click this to turn it on, this whole setup should spin. So, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot a very important step. We have to glue this together. So this is super glue from the create mod. And we can go ahead and align it right here and then just connect these two blocks. And then we'll just connect these plows. Now, when I click this, we have a functioning... Thing. Oh, um, for some reason it picked up those blocks. It shouldn't have done that. Um, I don't know why it did that. Unless it, it reached a little further than normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We want this just to be these blocks. Yeah, because if anything else gets attached, as you see, it's going to pull those along. Okay. 
Those should be much cleaner now, and it should be functioning, right? That's what we want. Nice. Okay. So, it's time to, I guess now, place the dirt in. Um, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave those spots that this is on open right now, temporarily. We're going to have a huge mess roll in because these guys just do not care. And are going to just roll in regardless. There we go. And we'll get this side placed in. This will get most of the mobs spawning in. Thankfully, I can just go ahead and turn this on. So, let's turn it on and hopefully not die ourselves, right? And it should already be killing most of the mobs. Let's get that placed in. We might have to kill some things by hand, it looks like. There's that. That has made its way out. That is now dead. And there we go. Everything is now in. Oh, let's get out. Okay. <laughs> so it does look kind of funny because some of the mobs are totally not taking damage. Ooh, it might be beneficial to me to make this. No, I still want them to be able to get it through. Hmm. I guess at some point we might want like a, a wall of some sort. And then they're going to get forced. Forced off. And they're going to get hit by that saw. I just thought I thought this would be kind of funny. It does seem like it definitely, the room definitely needs to be divided there. Yeah, it's gonna, they're going to get pushed off. The plow isn't doing much damage, but the plow should prevent the grass from growing. It should automatically harvest the grass. It is super goofy watching this work. For some reason, it seems like these guys are not taking any damage from the saw. So after trial and error, I still had to end up using this bad boy. The mob masher. Um, now, I'm going to need a way to collect this. I'm going to do the same thing I have over here. It's all set up to a chest. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that I had to use the fans. I thought this would be able to kill them all, but it actually doesn't kill the Drigme and stuff. So the only way to kill the Drigme and, and those mobs from ours is to use a mob masher. Um, so yeah, kind of unfortunate. But good thing is, is as you can see with this spinning, it does seem like it's doing a good job now. Uh, it looks like I probably should have put another plow right here so we can actually plow these middle pieces, but I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. I am using the fans. I have a fan to make sure the mobs get blown off the top. Uh, and then this fan to make sure they get over here or if they land over here, they get killed by the salt anyways. Pretty efficient, actually. A lot better than I was thinking. And uh, it gets the job done. And that's all that matters, right? Uh, so let me do some cleanup, get the rest of the, uh, the stragglers out from us setting it up. And then it should be nice and clean from this point forward. Of course, I can turn it off anytime I want if I ever need a uh, starbuckle or what have you. Let's get these guys, uh, set up. So now with all of that set up, it's time to get items transferred into functional storage. So I've already sort of organized most of the items in here and we're going to be able to really see what items uh, we actually need in this storage once we get things pumped in. Uh, but to do this, let's go ahead and set up our nodes. I'm going to have a node that is connected to storage. I'm going to have a node that is above my chest here, which is acting as a buffer and a node over here. Now, I don't know if this is actually going to reach, but let's go ahead and see. Will this connect here? So if I shift right click on this, I should be able to connect, but you see it says a maximum range of eight. So what I should be able to do is take this laser and place it on the wall here and I can connect to the laser just like that and then go from the laser to the node. Uh, and now I have this node connected to this node. So really it's like a pipe. Uh, and then I also need to connect this node to this node. Let's make sure that's connected and then right click. Shift right click on the one you want and then right click on the one you want it to connect to. So they're all nice and connected, right? Um, now this will have an insert card that is going to be on whatever this side is that's over here. I don't know if shrinking helps with this. Oh, it does. Oh, nice. I can actually get onto this side here and, uh, and I should be able to place this. So I open the east side 
so I can go ahead and place an item card onto the east side. Good. Um, so let's get back into laser IO. Uh, and let's see, we are going to need a few more item cards. Looks like just a couple. Uh, now on this, I can go ahead and click on the bottom and I can shift that into the down. And then let's open this up and throw these in here and then down on the bottom on this one as well. Now, if we open these up, I need these to be on extract and they need to be sending to the insert, not sending into here. So let's make sure this is also on an extract and it should be sending into this now uh, because this has the only insert. You can see the items going in. Now, I'm not putting upgrades in these yet because I just don't think they absolutely need it, but I am going to send this to transfer eight at a time on these cards. All right, we're going to send that to eight at a time. And that should be pulling the stuff out of the chest that we currently have filtered and should be putting them in there. Now, later on, we can definitely take these and we should be able to filter them our own way down the road. But this should allow me to turn this back on. And uh, we're going to have to start filtering out some of these ability tomes and things like that. Now, I definitely want to filter out things like these bows and stuff like that. So I can actually open up an item card before I put it in and we can start filtering things out. Um, so I can go ahead and say, hey, we want bone or we want bo uh, bows to be filtered out and you have an allow or deny. We want to allow these items. And uh, as far as the priority, it doesn't really matter because the every every inventory that we're sending is locked. But we could set this as a higher priority uh, and then everything else that's in here would get voided out. I don't necessarily want to do that. I think it'd be nicer to just set these up. Now we have ignore MBT or match MBT. I don't want to uh, follow what the MBT is. I want it to just go, hey, there's a bow, pull the bow out. Um, and so I should be able to set this up on a trash can. And now this is on the down. And if I put this item card in, it should only pull out the bows. As you can start seeing, it's only pulling out the bows and it's only trashing those items, which I think is a good thing. And uh, over here, I don't have it trashing, but anything that I want to add to the trash list, I can just open up the down and just add it into here and it will start to trash those items only. So everything's sort of coming together. I think uh, next episode, we definitely need to start working on managing our ores and starting to get all of that nice and processed up. Uh, so finding some way to, to do that would be fantastic. Uh, now that we have our power, things should be looking up from this point. Uh, so we have some easy power that we can get things up and running, get our ores, start to get those transferred and processed so we can just make more and more of these beautiful things. Uh, as you can see, I've already started working on a little bit more of the building here, and uh, it's only going to expand more and more each episode. I plan on uh, adding to this, of course, every episode for a little while. Um, and uh, this, this is going to be multiple levels. I definitely think this is going to be multiple layers as we build on to the outside and it should look pretty good even from the outside, even though I won't be out there much uh, because of all the extra stuff that's out here. It really is, should give it a little bit of depth. But remember, this is going to be more of like a castle interior. Uh, this is what I'm kind of going with, with this uh, nice little waterfall in the center. So should look pretty good. So guys, uh, did you enjoy today's episode? Let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what you enjoyed the most and what you would have done differently today. I really do appreciate you guys, and let's thank the supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to Jamika. Thank you so much for your amazing support. By the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Guys, thank you so much for your amazing support. I can't wait to get a new supporter signboard built somewhere else. Of course, that is going to happen very, very soon. But guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, click that subscribe button. We're getting really close to 600,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. It's just mind boggling to think about. Uh, but guys, I can't do it without you. So be sure to do that. Also, check out the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And I do live stream over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. Be sure to follow me there. Follow me on all the socials, uh, Twitter and all that fun jazz, if you would. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, as always, guys. Thanks for watching. Just a, just a small reminder to all those who use machinery. Um, any machine could be a smoke machine if uh, used improperly enough. Uh, just, just a tidbit tip there.